All right, brothers and sisters. Who do you follow? Do you follow after preachers and teachers that give you strange doctrine? Or do you actually follow the Holy Ghost and preachers that are actually led by the Holy Ghost and preaching in the Holy Spirit and in power? There's many preachers that out there, the majority of preachers out there, who are smart at cunning people. And they will tell they'll ask you this same question and try to use reverse psychology to persuade you to follow after their strange doctrine. They have a familiar spirit, a religious spirit, and then they'll try to twist it around on you to make you think that you have that religious spirit and deceive you and and, and to coming coming against your faith. Those are cunning spirits. Cunning spirits and they're common in the churches. They twist your words around on you. They use they use the Bible to try to come against the Bible. They use the biblical words of God to come against the word of God. And they try to use it against you and persuade you to turn away from the truth by mixing truth into their own preaching. These preachers tell you to follow Jesus and not man. These teachers tell you to follow Jesus and not strangers, but yet they are strange they are a stranger to God themselves. Because they're telling you to forsake the assembly. They're telling you that the biblical instructions of God does not matter. They're telling you that preachers and evangelists and apostles do not matter. They're telling you that you need to stay stuck at home and not do anything while they themselves sit back and deceive many. What they do is they sear up their conscience like a hot iron and block out those who try to correct, correct them and rebuke them. And they try to use, uh, use excuses and false slanders and lies against you by saying, I'm not trying to debate, I'm not trying to argue or make conversation. Well, here's the thing. There's a big difference between debating and correcting. Debating is fruitless. I don't, I don't debate anymore. I don't make debates anymore. I correct you, and if you don't want to hear it out, then you're also not hearing Jesus out. If you don't hear me out, you're not hearing Jesus out either. Because I'm led by the Holy Ghost. Am I Jesus? No. Am I the Holy Ghost? No. The Holy Ghost is speaking through me. The Holy Ghost doesn't speak through everybody. That's not, and that's to the uh, critics that say, well, everybody has the Holy Ghost speaking to them, through them. No, they don't. Because if you're not aligned with the King James Bible, and you're over there reading NIV Bibles, then no, you don't have the Holy uh, Ghost speaking through you. If you're following after Buddhism and Allah, Allah Akbar, and, and all this other type stuff, then no, you don't have the Holy Ghost speaking through you. Allah is dead. Jesus is alive and well. The Father is made manifest in him. A religious spirit would tell you otherwise. A religious spirit would tell you that God does not call men of God to go out there and preach the gospel unto all creatures. A religious spirit would tell you that God doesn't call evangelists to go out there and lead his sheep and feed his sheep. A religious t uh, spirit would tell you that God, God is not one. He's a three-deity, uh, three-person deity, all, all put together. A religious spirit would tell you that there's three deities. There's not one deity. A religious spirit would tell you that Jesus is a deity and he pre-existed. He wasn't born. He came down. He wasn't begotten of the Father. He came down. That's a religious spirit for you. A religious spirit will, tell, will come against this right here. And will come into your, uh, to your feed to try to persuade people to turn away from the truth. 
there are witches that try to come in to the churches to turn pe people's ears away from the truth. And they sear up their conscience like a hot iron and block out preachings like this. Because this doesn't tell them what their itching ears want them to hear. It's because I'm not a fable. That gives me joy and peace right there. That gives me hope in knowing that I'm not a wolf in sheep's clothing. Why? Because I'm not going to have many, many people in my seats. As long as I preach this hard truth right here. I'm not going to have many people in my seats. If you have a whole congregation... Well, congregation is not needed, but if you have a whole church full of people sitting in your seats, hundreds of people, then you're most likely itching their ears. If you have hundreds to thousands of people inside your seat, you're most likely preaching something that is itching their ears and pleasing to their flesh. If this isn't stirring up demons and, and, and the hearers, then something's wrong. If this isn't making the religious people angry, then then I'm then I'm preaching something wrong. Then I'm itching their flesh, itching their ears. If I'm not preaching strange doctrine, then something's wrong. If they're not coming against my preaching, then something is wrong. Then, if they're not coming against my preaching. So beware of this. Warning the People uh, channel. There's a guy, guy that has a channel called Warning the People. Beware of that. Beware of that channel. Go in peace, brothers and sisters.